My grandfather was a pilot on Sydney Harbour and initially that's why I thought about joining. I didn't actually know I was going to be the first guide because I, I applied to join the trust and I was thinking I'd be doing something like painting or something like that. But the volunteer manager at that time, I think taking into account my background as a psychologist said, no, you'd be good as a guide. So I went up to North Fort and we had this little tiny room and they were all ex-military of some sort, either served in the armed forces or in some way connected to the military. So while I wasn't exactly welcomed, I was treated with respect and I was sort of treated as a newbie. So people answered my questions. I was put on the joke list, which was very good. And gradually, I think by me asking questions, gradually they came to accept me as someone who was really interested and who would be okay. I did a lot of research, partly because I was interested and partly because I wanted a backstory to, to what I was talking about. So, you know, I became knowledgeable about artillery and about guns and how they were made and also different things like how forts operated. And my husband and I, when we would travel, we would go to all forts in Spain and France and wherever we would travel to. We came fort nuts. The volunteers and the guides come from a diverse background, many different backgrounds. And I think they all have, I've thought about this a lot, there's something that we all have in common. And I think I would, in grandiose terms, put it as that we, well, that we really seek to contribute to the common good. And we, we see this at the trust that has a custodianship of all of these wonderful lands around Sydney Harbour, which contain all of the white history and a lot of the indigenous history. We want them preserved because if they're gone or they're damaged, then our history is gone.